Okay, yeah, when I was asked to speak this morning, I really prayed about you know, what I should uh, discuss, and uh, my thoughts kept going back to last fall. Uh, we were winding up the Gilgit's Island skip, and we were um, we started, uh, you know, we were going to shift to a focus in prayer, and then Hurricane Sandy hit, and it really, you know, put into focus just how important prayer is, and you know, established the, the prayer shifts that we have, the importance of having 24-7 prayer, you know, at this church. And I feel that those, um, that sequence of events was a defining moment for this church. And I think it was a defining moment for me. So, you know, that's what I want to discuss today. I want to talk about prayer. Um, but before I talk about prayer, uh, I'd, I'd like to pray myself to, to start things out. Uh, dear Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you for this morning, for, for the praise, for the worship, and um, you know, just, just for the opportunity to, to share, um, to share your message, God. And I pray that your message shines through me. And I pray that this is not Mike's message. I, if this is Mike's message, we should all just go home, come back at 10 o'clock. But um, I, I pray that it's your message, because your message can transform lives. So I pray. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. The, uh, the first I'd like to discuss is in Matthew. Matthew 26, 36 through 45. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. When I read when I read these scriptures, um, you know, one of my typical reactions is to cast some serious judgment on these disciples. Here they are with Jesus, the Savior of the world, who's about to make the greatest sacrifice humanity will ever know. And they can't even stay awake. Either falling asleep. And, and you know, I have this reaction, the subtext behind that reaction. Because if that were me, I'd be right there with Jesus, I'd be watching, I'd be staying awake, there's no way I would fall asleep. But is that true? And another question that comes to mind, is prayer my primary work? That's something we talk about a lot here, is prayer my primary work? And, um, you know, I think about when I first became a Christian, I had this friend, Dan. Dan liked to pray about everything, all the time. And I remember at the time, you know, I was a new believer, and it annoyed me. Here he's going again. Yeah, David Dan's praying. Here we go. And I remember one time there was a, a Christian retreat we were at, and um, we were at the vending machine. And he, you know, he put his change in the vending machine, and the soda got jammed in the machine. So what does Dan do? He lays hands on the machine and prays for God to deliver the soda into his hands. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to break. I'm trying to explain. Him. Dan, Dan. You know, all you have to just kick the machine to sit over there. <laughs> happened to me yesterday, just kick the machine. But no, Dan was not kicking the machine. Dan, you know, Dan was praying. Uh, prayer was his primary work. And, you know, at the time I was a new believer, I didn't appreciate the value of that. Uh, but what about now? I'm not a Christian anymore. Is prayer my primary work? Uh, so I want to share a couple stories with you um, that maybe will help answer that question. Um, you know, not, not that long ago, I had... Um, you know, I work at a bank and had a, an opportunity, you know, for a promotion. Could um, you know, apply for a promotion. And then this promotion would make more money, it would give me more prestige, and and to be honest, you know, it would get me away from employees that it really kind of annoyed me. And you know, I know God calls us to, to love everybody, um, but it, it seems to me that you know some people are harder to love than others. <laughs> And but by the time five o'clock rolled around, I was exhausted from loving these people. So, so I really, you know, this job I came and I said, it's a no-brainer. I, I should, I should jump. I should go for this. 
But, you know, I'm a Christian, and, you know, for these kinds of decisions, you have to pray. You can't just jump in. And I know that. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll pray, God. I'll pray, you know, for your decision on this. And I'll keep praying until you say yes. <laughs> that's, that's where my heart goes. And then, even better, this is something I'm really good at. If, if God doesn't say yes, I'll misinterpret what he says as yes. So, you know, I was, I was praying for Mike's will to be done, not God's. Um, and I didn't get the, I didn't get the promotion. Um, so, and, you know, I have another example uh, that I'd like to share where, you know, you see, you see somebody, they, they share what's going on in, in their lives, you know, and, you know, they, you know family member's sick in the hospital, you know, they have financial problems, you know, they just share, and your heart goes out to them, and, you know, I know there's not, there's not much I can do other than pray, so what do you say, oh, man, you know what, I'll pray for you, I'll be praying for you. Then a week goes by, I see this person again, and I realize, I never prayed for them. You know, I'd say, I said, you know, I said I pray, and I didn't. And, you know, that's messed up. You know, Christians, you know, that's messed up. Why am I doing this? And, you know, those two examples, you know, there's examples of me falling asleep, you know, when I should be praying. Um, you know, the very thing I said I would never do in that scripture, um, but it's just, you know, metaphor of me falling asleep. Um, and, you know, you know, God has blessed me with, with a wife, with a child, and, and I'm called, to, you know, to be the leader of the family. You know, I'm called to, to lead a Christ-centered family. Um, but what exactly does, does that look like? Um, you know, obviously you have to put Christ first, but I can tell you Christ-centered families do not happen without prayer. And um, you know, I have a six-year-old daughter. She's very smart, very perceptive. She, you know, she sees when I pray. She sees how I pray. She sees if my heart's into it. And you know, she notices you know, if I don't pray. You know, and I need to lead the example for her. You know, I, I need to lead you know, a prayer-filled life you know, for my family. Um, and I can tell you, the good news in all this uh, is God's not finished with me yet. You know, he, he, he keeps working out on me, and he's really opening my eyes you know, to what my prayer life has been and, and what it needs to be. Um, I can tell you, one of the devil's great tricks is to make you think you're good when you're not. Um, but now God's really opening my eyes to you know, what prayer being the primary work uh, looks like and you know, where I am, and you know, he, he's going to guide me you know, to get there. Uh, he's not done with me. Um, but prayer as a primary work, that can't happen without God's help. Um, without God's help, my prayers are like, well, God, I'd like this, I'd like that, you know, this would be cool to have. You know, God, I really messed this up. Can you get me out of this jam without any consequences, you know? All right, and you know, that's prayer, right? Well, James 4.3 says, You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. And that's what I was doing. That's what I did with that job opportunity. You know, I was, I was in it for me. Um, but, but, when God is, but when God is in it, when you ask God, you pray um, according to his will. Uh, 1 John 5.14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And when you make prayer your primary work, and when you uh, invite God into it and pray to His will, He can transform lives. He can change men and women. And you know, that, that's what I pray. I pray that you know, for my life and for this whole church. Um, and I, just, I just thank you so much. Amen.